Today we shall be investigating analog tape restoration. Hello boys and girls, bit of a tape transfer thing going on. Uh, possibly about 50 year old and um, I don't know whether I would uh, bug it straight on the machine so next step while we're in the kitchen is the baking of the tape oven make sure you've taken the Yorkshire pudding tins out um, just got the light bulby thing on at the moment but the main bit you need to look at is the temperature it needs to be about 50 degrees C um, Bung it in the middle of the oven. <coughs> um, I had a temperature gauge on when I did this for real. This is just kind of going through the motions of it. And flip this little towel thing over the top. And it stops it getting super mad hot. So, baking of tape done. This one's already being done. It's already actually being played through as well. So I've checked that through. I didn't put a lead of tape on. I just thought it might be a bit of overkill really. said machines. Um, I have a real affinity with these 32 2 bays, the first studio I ever worked in. Um, the odd one in there. Anyway, this is the new one that has some um, different bits and pieces on it, so we um, you can change the EQ of the tape. Not that you ever get that written on a tape that you transfer. And, um, this one runs at uh, 7.5 and, and 15 ips. Uh, gets used quite frequently. If ever I've got 1 inch transfers to do, um, I generally get, I just get them trans, transferred at um, one of the many online places. You've just got to ring them up and get a quote because they change all the time. Um, but they they generally got a bigger machine, but the majority of stuff I do is on this one. However, this is a domestic four track. It's one of these that has the, um, you let the tape run right through and then flip it over run it to the other side. And this is uh, seven and a half and three and three quarters um, that's Pete putting us a new shower in because it's brilliant um, the main thing with these is give them a good clean before you start hence the bottle of isopropyl alcohol there we go Yeah, and cotton buds uh, give them a good clean and then um, I'll load the tape up uh, and I'll give you a little look through the process of um, getting it into the box. Right, so transferred and hit the big button. Um, straight out of the back, it sounds a bit of a racket at the moment, because uh, it's got loads of tunes going on at once, I'll explain why in a sec. Out the back of the machine, uh, in the front of my audio interface, give myself um, shed loads of headroom, if we have a look here, we're, we're actually we're going into Cubase. Um, there's another little bit that I need to show you here. Um, I, I, there's a reason I, I record in uh, um, Cubase, because it allows me to record on the two separate channels. So what we can hear is actually everything's been recorded on the two tracks in mono. On the same tape. So, I guess you just want more bang for your buck tunes wise. Um, once we've gone all the way through with uh, this side, I'll then flip the other side over. But the real key bit here is you've got to make sure that you have a listen through. Anyway, we um, we don't want to uh, wait around here. I'm not quite sure how long the tape is because we're running at three and three quarter rips of five inch spool. I reckon that'll be about an hour or so. Um, right, little pause and then back to action when we're all done. So while well, we're here and it's a lovely day, lovely spring February day, I'd um, might as well show you a little bit of the old editing lark. Um, uh, really all I'm doing is putting a new new leader on, uh, there hasn't been a leader on. Uh, just give it a little whiz in there, it's nice if you've got a nail, just run your nail underneath, there's like a little lip that'll get it in. Um, I'm from the school of thinking that 
I'd like to put a um, a decent bit of leader on. So put leader over to the side. Get it in your the block like so. It's his first big angly block that I want here. Just through back in my youth. Um, it's nice to try and get everything as tight as you can when you're doing it. Uh, main trick: fresh blade, each edit and session. Bin them. Wrap a bit of gaffer tape round them though. So make sure you don't take the wrong side out. And oops. My skills aren't as good as they were. No. We don't uh you know, just glue it back on. Give yourself a little bit of space. I know I haven't lined up the other side yet, but I'll do that in a sec. So that's working really well there. And there's a little tape on to You've got to be careful with these because sometimes they run right close to the to the edge and that's not good if it's got a bit of that 50 year old kind of memory there. <laughs> that's a tidy bit of tape. Um, tremendous. I'll just overlap it over the bit that we had. And, uh, and then make sure I go right through this time. Do you know? I was getting a bit nervous with these razor blades. I was Billy Oblivion. Billy Oblivion. I had trouble with the razor blades. Like I felt that like kind of lump through. Yep, that's cool, yo. Not left enough on. Doesn't help with my big fat fingers. Probably. Um, leave your splice and tape in the uh, in the box. Let's cut my first bit off, so it's got no sticky finger bits on. this yeah. I just get told off for using too much it's all got a price you know Um. Another trick is if I'm at this for a while, was a uh, bit of the old isopropyl alcohol to take some of the grease off your fingers. But I can't imagine this tape getting played again in the next couple of weeks because it's all being transferred lovely digitally. And guess who's put the wrong bit on? Camera shy, you see, camera shy. Is that in there? Cool. There's just one twizzing on the tape. Not of it, tape. Just in case you don't know. And the main thing is just so you've got a, a, at least a couple of blats round. Um, 
the uh, the thing. Give it a little bit. Now tidy up, I'll get you messy bleep. I've had some lovely adventures with tape. Um, cutting. One of the things that I was taught when I first started doing this, I was lucky enough to have a chap um, at the time teach me how to do this that was um, XBBC board. And uh, he made me take all the breaths and all the gaps out of uh, just, I think it was the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog recorded and then I had to cut all the breaths out. It was a bit mental really. Right, let's get on to the next bit. That was a bit of an aside. Right, then we resume. Hello. Um, I've got it all dumped in. Uh, we can see uh, I'll record near you. Dump in. Um, there were both sides just so you can see how um, I kind of guessed about right. Yeah, it was two hours worth of recording. Um, we had loads of bits and pieces. <laughs> And then we have the chipmunks on the other side. Um, really, that was down to um, it running at half of seven and a half bits a second. That's three and a bit something. Maths is not right there. So we dumped all the track in. It's really important that you um, listen right through everything as you're doing it um, because you need to keep a log of where everything is. Um, you might be wondering why I'm doing it in Cubase first rather than just going straight into WaveLab. The main reason being um, is I can have a mono track and what's happened here is we've got down and we've found <coughs> <coughs> I then <coughs> um, label up the track because I'm going to export that. I then exported it, uh, and for all intents and purposes, we're all done in um, in Cubase. So the next step will be to open up WaveLab. Um, the main thing is just trying to get the best fidelity out of um, the recording that we can. There's one I prepared earlier that we're going to have a look at in a sec. Um, I'm using Ozone 5. Um, I haven't really got into the WaveLab 9 uh, goings and things I could do with getting into that really. Let's have a little look where we're at here. So we should uh, the function that we've got of the, being able to listen to it encoded as an mp3 anyway i waffle and digress so, so the tape process and off yeah i'm not going mad with it so just get a little bit of that top end there um, this is quite a difference in it i'm going to try and keep it as it was um, then create a DDP of it all um, for the client, so that thing goes up into my cloud-based storage. So if the um, I can't get it, you know, it's like if you've had to mail me um, your yeah, analog tape, um, but I want to be able to get your masters back to a lot of them. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll have now we've had a look at the atypical. Um, Transfer from old school family, uh, loomy kind of thing. Lovely them though. Um, got a great story. I don't know whether it's for YouTube about one of a lady brought a tape in. This was years ago, and it was from the 1930s. It was a nightmare to transfer. Um, we had to do all kinds of clever stuff to to get it to the right speed. Um, and it, for all intents and purposes, it was a forerunner to the. Enoch Powell, Rivers of Blood. She was absolutely mortified when she heard it. But the um, but most of the memories are lovely. So.
You can probably see from the beginning and the end, um, this was done a while ago. Um, I've kind of decided off the last couple of videos I've done are a little bit long, so I've cut a big chunk out of this and then um, the next video I think we should be looking at is the difference between mixing and mastering. Thank you and good night and keep safe in these Covid times.